So one of the issues with the CVs uh, all of a sudden trying to get on the Twitter platform is that, again, this is a guy, Danny, who has, uh, you know, they've got a manufacturer's reputation online and does that sort of like Black Braverman, honestly, does that match up to how they actually run their dog law, et cetera. You know, and I, back in the day, talked to, you know, and I think I'm one of many people in the, you know, a lot of people have, uh, who have worked there have bad things to say about, uh, not just Mitch, Dallas, but just the way they run their dog lots. And it's sort of funny because a year or two ago, they had someone else running it besides someone in their family uh, in terms of the Willow Dog Lot of Dallas CV. And then there was still a tremendous amount of complaints. Someone's calling the cops, you know, and uh, about dog beatings and about neglect and puppies dying. And I just want to go back to when, you know, when I was working in Alaska for Martin Boozer, you know, I, if, if someone had, you know, honestly, I probably should have called the cops too, because I was there and I was you know, doing a litter split or something with them. And there were puppies dying. You know, we were training them the night highway. We came back. There was neglect. You know, there was dogs getting shot. There was dead dogs in the freezer. You know, there was not a, and you know, that's another guy with a shining reputation online. But you know, again, it's a, it is sort of a you know a livestock approach in Alaska in a lot of places. But uh, you know, the hard reality is. There's just so many issues with this dog mushing industry that aren't really getting shared. You know, in terms of the labor, uh, the labor rights of all the dog handlers that work there, a lot of them are working for no days off. A lot of them are working for cash under the table, room and board situations. It's not uh, as shiny as the media would like it to be made. And and I, like I mentioned in one of my other videos, you know, uh, from last summer when I was in California, you know, it mimics and parallels all of the issues with human trafficking uh, in terms of people who are working in the agricultural industry in the United States. A lot of them Latinas from Mexico, etc. You know, where our food is coming from and who. Or do those people? It's not just the, it's not just the rights and the concern about the welfare of the animals, you know, in Iditarod, but also the people working there, or the welfare of the animals, you know, in terms of your, the chicken you're eating and the beef you're eating. But it's also the people working there. Are those people even uh, documented? Are they even, uh, in terms of the the local laws for employees being treated the right way in terms of days off, in terms of health care, uh, in terms of overtime if they're working more, you know. And I worked, you know, for years there, and it was always overtime. It was always over, you know, 12 hours a day from six to six. So uh, and no days off. So, but more importantly, though, that there's just these other issues. You know, it's like Martin Boozer had phones wired so he could listen to the conversations and he didn't tell you about it. You know, there's surveillance cameras and stuff at some of these dog counts and they don't tell their handlers about it. You know, it's it's pretty crummy stuff. But uh, but I just want to go back and focus on the fact, you know, the CVs, the CVs have a dog that doesn't even appear like it can walk in Nome this year and they're laughing about it. I mean, uh, you know, sort of from the thing. It's not, uh, I don't have an axe to with them, but I just think it's funny. You know, Danny specifically wants to have this social media presence to be able, they have, there is no, I've never heard of someone who works for the CVs with anything but negative things to say about, about the CVs. And maybe that's their management approach, but, uh, and maybe that's their approach in terms of paying people on time and stuff. Cause I've heard a lot of things about that, but I've just heard terrible, you know, horror stories. And, and I, and a lot of other mushers have too, in terms of their calling, in terms of the dog's beatings and stuff like that. And I visited Danny and I visited Mitch when I was younger and I didn't get that impression. I was there 15, 20 minutes, but I did get the impression that they, uh, they approach things hands off to some degree and they have other people doing the work a lot and they are also people who are sort of working the numbers game in terms of raising a lot of puppies and then uh you know selecting selecting the few that are good and getting rid of the other ones uh through various means in, including killing them and shooting them uh and but then also you know selling them too but they're also really closed lipped they won't tell people uh, about their pedigrees and the genetics of their dogs they won't share that it's very secretive and part of that is the fact that they're going through so many dogs every season in terms of breeding and raising them and there aren't the rules in the industry to say you can't do that uh but there are the rules in America to say you can't uh, you can't be involved in human trafficking, which is felony level crimes. And if you look hard at the Iditarod community and the network of mushrooms that have been doing it a lot, they are essentially basically it's a human trafficking network. And a lot of them, like Didi Genro, you know, doesn't train the dogs all for several winters. Her her husband does it, and the handlers do it. Doesn't work, you know, with the dogs. Very very minimal amount of working with the dogs, and uh, you know, but then still goes on the race in terms of driving the dogs in the race. You know, sort of. Again, this sort of like Blair, you know, there's there's an image of a lot of these people are just in it for the photos, in it for the newspaper articles, in it for the accolades, and in it for the online interactions that are fake, and not in it for the the uh, the self reliance, for the history, for the culture, for the uh, the bond with not just the dogs but the earth and the bond with the uh, uh, planet and how you know Joe Rogan can see her back in the day, etc. They were trying to memorialize and commemorate that, not something about hokey shit and cheesy shit and. Uh, you know, dogs that can't walk and uh, guys like Danny who just want to be in it for the money and be fake online but don't want to take a challenge with one dog and, and ski and try to defend that family name. You know what I mean? That's that's part of the issue with Danny, I think, is that he doesn't want to uh, uh, rise to a challenge. He wants to play games online.